So the other day, I was just yeah browsing through Reddit, right, looking looking to the forums and stuff, and I came across a just a small discussion about visualizations, of course, right, visualizations, and the uh, the topic was about what is the best visual in Power BI. Do you guys want to you guys want to guess what is the best uh, visual in Power BI? Can somebody just unmute yourself and let me know what do you think is the best um, visual in Power BI? What do you guys think? KPI. What did you say? KPI. KPI? Hmm? It's pretty awesome, but that's not Line it. chart. Line chart? Oh, yeah, strong contender, but I'm not gonna it. I guess pie chart. <laughs> pie chart is awesome, but you know what? It's not. None of those. The best visual is actually sales funnel or funnel chart in Power BI. And guess what? I know like everybody's talking about it in Reddit, so you guys hear it first from me. And uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you guys on how to create a sales funnel using funnel chart. All right, okay. But before I start, what is actually better than sales funnel? I mean, what is actually better than funnel chart? Uh, waterfall. Ugh, waterfall is so yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kidding, babs. <laughs> right? No. What is better? Um, I personally think uh, this visual is better than funnel chart, and it is funnel chart will drill with drill down functionalities. <laughs> All right, great. So yeah, but before I continue with uh, the, this little tidbit, what I want to uh, I want to say something. Um. All visuals are equally important to Power BI, so we need to be visual inclusion. So let's not hit on any visuals. So I just want to throw it out there because today we're going to be doing sales funnels, and um, I say that funnel chart is the best. But yeah, all visuals are, are important, and we should be visual inclu uh, inclusion. Okay. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do today is have you? I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of sales funnel. I mean funnel chart. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that funnel chart is the uh, most popular, the most trending visual right now in Reddit. I lied. I did not go to Reddit and nobody talked about that, right? So I just want to hype it up, right? But I do think that sales, I mean, funnel chart is not being used quite often enough. A lot of people, they prefer KPIs, they prefer line chart, they prefer bar chart and even pie chart. Can you believe that? Pie chart, pie chart is pretty awesome. But sales funnel is like, I mean, funnel chart is actually pretty awesome. And it's, it becomes more awesome if you can actually have drill down capabilities in there. You know what? Let's get started. Okay, so, so now we are in Power BI Desktop. Before we start, um, let's have a look at the, uh, yeah, the introduction. So let me just give you a business context. Right? Com company A has an ERP system that stores the following type of transactions in separate tables. So, the key is separate tables. We have one table for inquiries, one table for quotations, one table for sales orders, and another one is for invoices. Why does it do that? Because it's a lot of transaction and it's just how we actually track different metrics in different fact tables, like different metrics, different fact tables, right? Or else, if you put everything in one fact table, it's gonna be so huge and it's gonna take a long time to process and a long time to load, right? If we separate that into different um, fact tables, we actually create a, we'll be creating a better dimensional model for our Power BI reporting. All right, so let's have a look into the data model. Ta -da. Okay, this is not the data model. Okay, see, look at that. It's a, ve it's a very simple data model. Uh, we have DIM product and then we have fact sales orders, first fact table. Fact inquiries, second one, fact quotations, and fact invoices. So if when we look into these different metrics, we can kind of see that there's actually a funnel going on, right? So first, inquiries. Customers ask, hey, how much is this? Second, quotations. They want to, yeah, give me a quotation about for this stuff. And third, it becomes a sales orders. Once the, once the client pay for it, then because of the invoice, right? So these transactions are, are being stored uh, in a separate table, right? So typically, what people do is they just grab a funnel chart right? and they just put in all the measures into the, uh, into the value bucket. Right, look at that. So values. Total inquiries is the first one. Total quotations is the second one. Total sales orders is the third one. 
and then total invoices is the fourth one. So by creating a, a single measure for every single fact table, you can actually just put everything in the values and have your sales funnel. But you, will, you do not have the uh, drill down capabilities. Like if I right click on this, I can't drill down to see what is the details, what makes up of the, uh, the inquiries. Um, some people would say that maybe what we can do is, let's say if you want to drill down into dream product, can we bring the product hierarchy into groups? Nope. Even though, even though the, um, all these fact tables are showing the same dimension, you can't do it this way. The reason is because we have multiple measures in here and they are, they are siloed, okay? So what can we do? Like, hmm, what can we do? What can we do to actually make this more awesome, right? How can we actually make it so that we can actually drill down into the, uh, into the, uh, the details of every single metric? All right, let's go to step one. First, all you need to do is create a table. Yep. So um, in Power BI Desktop, I'm pretty sure you guys know this, there is a function called enter data. So if you click on enter data, what you can do is you can actually create a table manually. And then once you've, um, uh, once you populated the table, you just click load and it will be load, it will be loaded into the Power BI uh, data model, right? So what do we want to create here? What I want to create here is a column that has all the metrics that I want to uh, use in my, uh, in my sales funnel, all right, metric. And then I can put, uh, let's say, inquiries. And then the next one would be, uh, what is it called? Quotations. And, and the rest of the, uh, the metrics. I've already created this, so I'm not going to do it here. So I'm going to click cancel. So, and I will just show you the table that I've made. Manual entry. And here, look at that, metric. Inquiries, quotations, sales orders, and invoices. But that's not all that you need. The next column that you need is a sort column because there is a process, there is a step, right? From inquiries to invoices. Inquiries have to be the first one. Quotation is the second one. Sales orders is the third one. And then invoices is the fourth one. So now you create a column. In, in create, in, when you were creating the table, just create another column for sort. And once you've done that, all you need to do is go to the data view, click on metric, and then sort this column based on that column sort. I've already done this. So now whenever I create something, inquiries will be the first position, quotation is gonna be second position, sales order is gonna be third position, and then invoices will be in the fourth position. All right, going back to our uh, little tutorial. So all you need to do is create table by using enter data, and then you can see the table in your data model itself. Where is it? Hmm, right here. And what you're going to notice is there is zero connections to any of the tables, and it's fine. We can still use it. All right, let's go back here. Step one. So we've done the enter data. We've seen the table. And then we yeah, sort by column. I already showed you how to use the sort by column. So step two is we need to create a DAX measure. So um, before I did, bef you know what, I was, I was actually reluctant to show this um, because that like, Alberto Ferrari was here and I did not want to embarrass myself with my horrible decks, but I think this is pretty okay. I uh, took a long time to look into this and see if, I, if there's any better way to, for me to do this. And this is what I came up with, all right? So it's not a lot, 15 lines with two lines of uh, comments and yeah, let's let's go through this measure and see what it does, right? So a switch measure. So basically, what we what we are doing is we we are creating a measure that lets us switch between the different measures that are going to be dependent on the filter context of your visual, right? Does that make sense? Right. So you're going to have uh, let's say what's going to happen here is if you choose invoice, this measure is going to return invoice. If you choose quotations, it's going to return quotations. So let's see how does it work, all right? So first thing is, if you look into line number five, I'm pretty sure it's pretty small, but you know what? Let's have a look here. Dex, manual entry, measures. I'm gonna make it slightly bigger for you guys. Metric switch. Mm. All right. 15 lines, small one, it's pretty easy. All, all we have here is variable, selected value, and switch, right? So line number five, it looks at what 
uh, what measure is being uh, being selected, and that depends on the metric that we created just now. So remember the table that we created just now? The metric column houses all the different uh, metrics that we want to analyze, uh, we want to visualize in the sales funnel. Okay, and then return. So now we're going to switch, and the expression is true. If the selected metric is inquiries, if, we sel if inquiries is selected, return me the measure total inquiries. If selected metric is quotations, then return me total quotation. And saying goes until invoices. And then if nothing is selected, return me blank, all right? Okay, so now that we have that, what do we do with it? Let's go into step three. We can create a sales funnel, all right? So instead of bringing in every single measures into the values, now I just brought in the metric switch into the values. Let's have a look again. Let's have a look again what metric switch is. This is it, all right? Instead of bringing four measures into the, uh, the values, I'm bringing one measure that is able to switch between the different measures. Pretty cool, I think, right? And what about group? Group is gonna be metric. Metric, let's just go back, what metrics? All right, metric is basically the measures, I mean, the table that we created earlier and the column metric houses, I mean, stores the different metrics that we want to visualize in the sales funnel. So if you bring in metric column into group and the switch measures into values, this is what you get, all right? Okay, but we still do not have the drill down functionalities. So let's go to the last step. So what can we do now is because we do have a dimension that is being shared by all the four different fact tables, we can actually use this to, uh, as our drill down um, description, all right? So what you can do is here, click on this and then bring in product hierarchy that I have prepared earlier and bring it into the group under metric. So. The sales funnel, what it's gonna do first is, it's gonna um, bring us the different measures by metric, and then you'll be able to actually drill down into categories, subcategories, and product. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so now we have inquiries, quotations, sales orders, and invoices. If I right click on inquiries, I can actually drill down into the next level, which is product category. I can actually drill down further into subcategory and drill down further into product. And this works with all the different uh, measures that we have in here, all right? Sales orders, for example, drill down. Because they all share the same dimension, we can actually now drill down into the different um, metrics and then look at the uh, product hierarchy for that, uh, for that metrics. All right, cool. So what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about it? Yeah, unmute yourself, let me know. What do you guys think? Give you some clapping. There's some clapping to <laughs> Really cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm not done yet. <laughs> All right. So now we have results. Um. So this is the result. This is the sales funnel with drill down. But another thing that you can actually do, uh, use with this technique is this. You can actually turn it into a slicer, and use one visual to actually toggle between the different measures that you want to visualize. So this is great, especially if you do not have a lot of uh, real estate in your in your um, in your report, right? Um, so instead of having four different visuals that shows us the same uh, the same the same thing, what we can do is we just create one uh, one visual, and then toggle between the different metrics. Right? This way, we can remove um, we can actually reduce the amount of visuals that we have on our report canvas. All right, I think that is it from, from me. Do you guys have any questions at all about this? No, all right, great. Um, if you, so this, uh, this little tutorial is actually available on our website. So if you want to play around with this, feel free to go to our website and have a look at it. And I think Renata.